it's currently at two dollars and twenty two cents a share yahoo analysts estimate it can go up to four dollars and sixty seven cents in the next twelve months hey guys i usually don't indulge in penny stocks but today i have to present you with an opportunity and i'll say the reason i don't indulge in penny stocks is because normally so many of them have positive or negative earnings every year they're losing money these are companies that are losing money year over year and trying to find the few that are making money is like trying to find a needle in a haystack well actually i have a developer working on an app that's going to do just that. It's going to check the annual low price of these stocks every day and pull up the ones that are making money. That's the big stocks, that is the penny stocks, and so forth. So I have one to present to you guys. That is Heritage Global Inc. Now, those who are familiar with my channel know that I break the stocks on my watch list down into three tiers. Three stars, which is the most fundamentally sound. Two stars beneath that. And one star, the least fundamentally sound, but still sound enough to be on the watch list. Well, Heritage Global is a two star but it's just a few minor things that made me make it a two star instead of a three star it's a great company that we're about to look into right now it's currently at two dollars and 22 cents a share yahoo analysts estimate it can go up to four dollars and 67 cents in the next 12 months however I've bought this, I'm holding on to it because I believe it can move up much higher in years to come. I could see this stock at around $20, $30 a share or maybe even higher. In any event, they have an earnings report dropping on August 8th or later that week. But let's jump into and look at the fundamentals for this company. So, if we look at, I actually did a video and put it on my channel once, which um, it said, do this before buying any stock. When you look at a stock, you should be looking at the earnings per share for that stock for the last five years are they all negative earnings are they shaky they're all over the place are they moving up most penny stocks you're going to see negatives all at the top meaning the company is losing money every year but if we look at Heritage Global, a little $2.22 company, 2019 they made $0.14 cents a share, 2020 they made $0.32 cents a share, 2021 they made $0.09 cents a share, it dropped a little then, but still wasn't negative. 2022 they came back $0.43 cents a share. 2023 dropped a little 34 cents a share and so far in 2024 yahoo projects their earnings per share to be at three thirty three cents a share that can drop it can increase but that's what he projected to be at at this point so here we have a penny stock a small company but yet this company is making money every year and they're growing now let's look at the stock prices in 2019 
The low price for their stock was 40 cents a share. The high price was a dollar. That was a 150% gain. In 2020, the low price was 55 cents. High price was $4.20. That was a 663.64% gain. Remember, that was COVID year. 2021, the low price was $1.37. High price was $4.20. That was a 206.57% gain. 2022, the low price was $1.02. The high price was $2.75. That was a 169.61% gain. And in 2023, the low price was $2.25. The high price was $4.08. That was a 81.33% gain. And right now, they're at $2.22. But Yahoo analysts project that in the next 12 months, they can move up to $4.67. If that happens, that will be a 110.36% gain in one year. Now, this company is currently at a P.E. ratio of 6.73, and we see it's been lower in previous years, been 2.86 in 2019, 1.72 in 2020, but it was higher in 21, it was 15.22. And it was almost around the same in 23. It was 6.62, but it was 2.37 in, um, it was 2.37 in 2022. What that tells us is this company could drop some more, but it can move up just like it did in 2023. And in 2021, it can move up right from where it is. But let's say it dropped to, I'm not going to go to 2020, the COVID year. I'll go to 2022, 2.37. Let's say it dropped 2.37 times 0.33. If it were to drop all the way to 2.37, then it would drop to 78 cents a share. But you know that when we buy stocks, we expect them to move up. And if they're moving down, what do we do? We sell them. We're not going to stick around. We hold them for a little while. If around a week we're seeing it's still moving down, we're going to get out of it. You know, the most I may do is hold on to it for a week, wait to see what happens the next Monday. If it's still dropping, I'm out of it. But in any event, it has some good potential upside for this year as well as the years to come that I see. Now, this company... They have a free cash flow yield of 5.98%. 5% is what's considered acceptable. I really don't factor in free cash flow yield that much when I do my analysis, but I know it's an important figure for some, so I add it. Bear in mind, with my free cash flow yield, I'm dividing the free cash flow by the five years or averaging the free cash flow by the five years. So it gives us a free cash flow yield of 5.98. So now let's look into the fundamentals for this company. If we go to their income statement, in 2019, this company made $26 million $168,000. 
Of that, they retain three million eight hundred and ninety-nine thousand. That was a fourteen point nine zero percent profit margin. What that means is that after they made their money, twenty-six million, and they paid all the expenses that the company had to pay. When you get the amount that was left over, three million eight hundred and ninety nine thousand, that amount was fourteen point nine zero percent of their overall sales and revenue, and that's a pretty good figure. I've seen companies, wow, you got some companies where this profit margins down to two percent. You have others with a profit margin. Is around five percent. Um, you have technology companies that can be twenty or even thirty percent or higher, but fourteen point nine zero percent. I would consider that a pretty decent profit margin, and as we move into the following years, it gets even better. So in twenty twenty, they made twenty six million. One hundred and eighty-three thousand. Of that, they retained nine million six hundred and fifty-eight thousand. That was a thirty-six point eight nine percent profit margin, and that's pretty good. Usually, in twenty twenty COVID lockdown years, you saw profit margins drop, not increase, but theirs increased dramatically. In twenty twenty-one. They had they made twenty five million seven hundred and ninety two thousand. Of that, after paying all expenses, they retained three million fifty three thousand. That was eleven point eight four percent profit margin, so it dropped that year. But in twenty twenty two, they made forty six million. Nine hundred and fourteen thousand. Of that, they retained fifteen million four hundred and ninety-three thousand. That was a thirty-three point zero two percent profit margin. And in twenty twenty-three, they made sixty million four hundred and five hundred and forty. They made sixty million five hundred and forty-five thousand. And they retained twelve million four hundred and seventy-five thousand after paying expenses. That was a profit margin of twenty point sixty percent. So their profit margin is pretty decent. Even more impressive, from twenty nineteen to twenty twenty three, this company increased its sales and revenue. From twenty-six million dollars to sixty million dollars. Now, as we move down to our return on equity, the return on equity looks great to me. Twenty twenty-one is a little low, but twenty nineteen thirty-two point ninety-one percent. Twenty twenty thirty two point twenty five percent, twenty twenty one nine point thirty five. If they're at around twenty, I'm happy. Twenty twenty two thirty two point zero eight percent, and then in twenty twenty three they drop down to twenty point forty two. But twenty percent is 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 decent for me. They have a nice free cash flow yield. Their return on equity is good. Debt to equity, eighty-five percent in twenty nineteen, forty-eight point eighty percent in twenty twenty, fifty-four point sixty-one percent in twenty twenty-one, thirty-nine point eighty-eight percent in twenty twenty-two, and thirty-six point sixteen percent in twenty twenty-three. So their debt to equity. Is I would say it's great. 
I like the debt to equity to be like under 200%. Theirs is really great. It's actually under 100% for all five years. Heck, it's under 50% for three of them. So we know that the balance sheet is going to look good. And if I look at the balance sheet, well, in 2019, the current liabilities exceeded the current assets, which we don't like. But for all of the following years, the current assets exceeded the current liabilities and the total assets exceeded the total liabilities and by a lot it about doubled it in 2019 and a little more than that the following years so i, I love their balance sheet this company did not pay a dividend But when it comes to companies, we love when a company, as an investor, we love when a company buys back more shares of its own stock. Yay, and we hate when they sell more shares of their own stock. Boo. So, this company made no change in 2019. But in 2020, they sold 7,607,000 worth of shares. And in 2021, they sold $221,000 worth of shares. That may be, well, that will be one of the factors that I made this a two star instead of a three. But in 2022, they bought back 329,000 worth. And in 2023, they bought back 364,000 worth. Now, their free cash flow in 2019, it was 678,000. 2020 it was nine million one hundred and forty one thousand in 2021 it was negative four million fifty six thousand but in 2022 back on track positive year six million two hundred and sixty eight thousand and 2023 twelve million. 764,000. That negative year in 2021 to 4,056,000, that was another reason that I bumped it down from a three star to a two star, but just those two small things. Now, free cash flow is the money a company is going to have at the end of the year. And one of the things that happens with free cash flow is your dividends are paid from free cash flow. So I like to see if a company actually has enough free cash flow to be paying the dividends that they're giving out or are they just borrowing or something like that to pay the dividend just to attract people to their stock? Well, this company doesn't pay a dividend, so that's not really a factor. Now, moving down to the statistics, we don't have a beta, but like I said, they don't pay a dividend. But... There was, or there are, 37.34 million outstanding shares of this stock. And of those shares, 15.92% is owned by insiders, 
those who work at or are involved with the company? That's a pretty big number. 15.92% of 37.34 million. So generally when I look at companies, I'm lucky if I see 1% of insiders owning the company. You know, usually the numbers are under 1, but 15.92%, that's a pretty decent number. It shows the people in the company trust in it or have faith in it. And as far as institutions, large banks and institutions, 33.77% own the shares of this company. Mr. Ross M. Dove, born 1953, is the president, CEO, and director. And Heritage Global is in the capital markets industry, financial services sector. So that's my analysis on Heritage Global, guys. Um, look forward to speaking to you guys in the next video. Have a great day.